I'm Blake Lehman. I'm 17 years old. I was sentenced to 55 years for murder. My name is Ireland McKeegan. I'm 16 years old and I got sentenced for 10 years for robbery. I'm Marquise Lee. I'm 18 years old uh, and I got 15 years for aggravated battery. I'm Jesus Mercedes Perez, I'm 17 years old, and I got sentenced to 65 years for murder. This is Wabash Valley Correctional Facility in the American state of Indiana. This 90-acre maximum security compound is home to over 2,000 of the state's most notorious criminals. The convicts are imprisoned by a 15-foot high fence topped with razor wire, a secondary electrified fence, six guard towers, and over 750 staff. Block D is unique. Inside live 40 teenagers. Teenagers so troublesome and violent, they've been tried and convicted as adults. They've committed everything from armed robbery to murder, serving sentences from two years to 65 years. Locked in their cells for 18 hours a day, these youngsters are paying a huge price for their crimes. Boys, reflecting on how a moment of madness has destroyed their lives. Nine a.m. Two new teenage inmates arrive. Children are tried as adults when they've repeatedly reoffended in the youth system, or their crime is considered so horrific that an adult maximum security prison is deemed the only answer. With over 50 teenage boys annually coming through their gates, the officers at Wabash know what to expect. Well, these guys, they come in, they don't use deodorant and stuff. They don't care. I, I don't think they care. <laughs> at 17, Jacob Eldridge is back for a second visit to the juvenile block, after breaking his parole on a previous conviction for carrying a handgun without a license. We got a good program here, but once in a while, they just don't do the program. They go out and get in more trouble and come back. And one of them here just did that. He got out, and now he's back again. So how many times have you been here before? Once. It's my second time back. But it's my last time back. You sound very short, right? I am. Looking at the camera. The other new inmate story is typical of the youngsters at Warbash. A few minutes of their life, followed by huge consequences. My name is Ireland McKeegan. I'm 16 years old, and I got sentenced for 10 years for robbery. Ireland owed money for drugs. So he, his sister, and a friend decided to rob a family friend's house. No, I guess you can say that I really didn't want to rob him at first. So I, I pretty much made myself. Uh, the way they had planned really didn't go how it was going to actually go. Island rang the doorbell. When the homeowner, a 64-year-old man, answered, Island beat him with a socket wrench. Well, I'm just beating this dude up, and I don't know why. I just. I guess since my adrenaline was pumping, I really wasn't thinking to just stop, but I just didn't. Yeah, my hands were all bloody afterwards. I couldn't see any white on my hands. He ended up being in the hospital for like four or five days. Uh, he lost like three and a half pints of blood and broke his jaw. Uh, he had contusions to the back of his head. and. Uh, I think, I think that's about it. Enjoy your stay. 
With all their possessions, it's the walk to their new home, the juvenile facility in Block D. Completely separate from the adult prisoners, these 40 teenage criminals eat, sleep, and learn in this one unit. New guests, new guests. There to greet them is Correctional Officer Morrissey, a former military officer whose job now is to keep the peace in the juvenile block. A new inmate will come in, we'll place him in the cell, we'll make sure he has all his hygiene, all his necessities, and he's ready to roll. The teachers will interview him, the casebook manager, counselors will interview him, medical will interview him, and then he'll be on his own. <laughs> With 18 years' experience, Officer Morrissey has seen what it's like for new inmates. It's scary, especially if they're, they've never experienced this type of environment. They run the gamut between fitting right into isolating themselves in their cell. We have to treat each individual as an individual. Some are very aggressive and the unit will respond the same way. Some of them are very passive. It just depends on the personalities that come in. They all seem all right, you know. They all said, hey, and what's up? So, you know, they seem pretty cool so far, so we'll find out. I want to go home with my family and uh, get an education and just go home. That's a big reason why I want to kind of, you know, stay out of trouble while I'm here. Uh, do good and get out. Prison officers aren't the only staff to work in the unit. New inmates Jacob and Island have an induction from the casework manager, Alita Burnett. On this first one, as we're going through this, I want you to check off when I tell you to check off what we cover on that. No Alita's job is to offer the boys counseling and guidance. It'll be a good opportunity because we have some really great uh, teachers here. These kids are not coming from a healthy place, period. So they may feel like the whole system, the whole world has given up on them long before they even got there. And, and that wouldn't surprise me, you know. Um, I mean, what I like to say is these, our children aren't throwaways, you know. We need to get them back out and be healthy. They're just not healthy. This is all the rules and regulations. I really want you guys to read through these because ignorance of these rules and regulations is no excuse for conduct, just like ignorance of the law is no excuse. I try to be firm, fair, and consistent with all of the kids, and a lot of them, they don't like to displease me and, you know, that type of thing. but. Um, I don't know if I want to be called the mama. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of babies to have to take care of in there. The majority of teenagers at Warbash are in for sentences of 10 years or less. However, being tried as adults means that those who have committed horrific crimes will spend much of their life in prison. I'm Jesus from Cedar Perez, I'm 17 years old, and I got sentenced to 65 years for murder. Jesus has been involved in gangs from a young age. Well, I've been drunk, I've been hit with bats, I got stabbed in my leg, I've been shot at. Like, ain't nothing new to me. Like, I see this every day. Like, you feel me? I, I've been, I live this life, you feel me? I, you feel me? It ain't nothing, so I never got shot, though. Surprisingly. One June evening, out driving with friends in his hometown of Elkhart, he spotted a rival and an argument began. He was throwing gang signs or something. And he said, like, I don't know, he said something. I got possessed or something, like, something came over me. That's when, like, that's when I felt like something just 
That's when I felt that. Just... In a fit of anger, Jesus fired one shot. Yeah, I seen his face too. Like, I remember seeing him. Like, like you know, a surprise face. Sixteen-year-old Braxton Barhams was dead. I know, like me and him didn't get along, but damn, I just feel me. I just took his life. Like, what the fuck? What did I just do? Jesus is now spending 65 years at Warbash, reflecting on that one moment. I guess I don't like talking about it or something. What's the main reason you think you don't like talking about it? Because it's just, that's that's what changed my life. That's what, feel me, that's what changed everything. That's like, I feel like when that happened, my life stopped too, like, feel me, because I don't know, like, everything else is like, just gone. Teenagers at Warbash get one hour of recreation in the morning and one hour in the evening. Part of the staff's philosophy not to punish, but to rehabilitate. Hell no! If you have just punishment and no rehabilitation, then you're doing nothing. You're just housing people and, um, you know, you're not helping them turn around and then you're going to dump them back onto society. So basically, you just shot yourself in the foot because um, they're going to go out and be the very same they were when they come in, and maybe worse. I'm tired of being locked up. I'm in the penitentiary. Ain't got no money on my books, and I'm so hungry. Man, I'm locked up. I'm Mark Keesley. I'm 18 years old, uh, and I got 15 years for aggravated battery. For the better, because I'm tired of talking to my people through these letters. Man, I'm locked up. I'm trying to make it in the industry. I'm trying to go. I'm trying to get big. You know, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm always going to feel me. Remember where I came from. I ain't gonna never forget where I came from. Feel me? Where I grew up at, the hood. You feel me? It's, it's positive. I'm trying to. I'm trying to make it to the top. Crazy. I ain't even. Marquise was 16 and on probation for theft when he committed his crime, for which he was tried as an adult. Some people say it ain't fair because we underage. But then again, I'll be like, you feel me? We did the, like, the, you ever heard of the, the saying, you, you feel me? You do the crime, do the time, you feel me? So that's why I'm like, you feel me? I, I did it, so I mean, I really, I'm owning up to what I, you feel me? They charged me like I was a man. I'm going to step up like a man and do my time. The victim had assaulted Marquise's mother, so he decided to get revenge with his accomplices, his uncle and mother. Excited. I was just trying to get to him. I was ready to get to him more than what I already did. I just wanted him. I wanted him to know, like, to me, he he had the right one this time. Like he he messed up. I wanted him to know that, like, yeah, you're not finna get away with this. So I'm finna get you. I ran up on him, and we just got the fist fight. We got the fight, and uh, he fell. I dropped him. He fell, and he crawled to the door. That's when I seen the chance. So you feel me? I took out the gun. I shot him. Wow. When I shot him, he dropped. I, the first shot, uh, when I, I learned in um, court, the first shot hit him in the back, and his spinal cord, and it, and it paralyzed him. His uncle then also fired. The victim died at the scene. He, he got what he deserved. That's how I was feeling, like, you feel me? If he did, he did. If he just got shot, he, he, you feel me? he deserved what I gave him, you feel me? He shouldn't have hit my mama. Marquise recently turned 18 and is due to move up to adult prison. However, he's been allowed to stay in the juvenile unit in order to complete his education, as long as he avoids getting ridden up. For the past six months, he's essentially stayed out of trouble. This is part of our reward program. At 180 days, they're entitled to get a loaner TV and an hour of extra record weekend. His motivation to not get in trouble. Get thinking like, ah oh, man, I don't want to lose my TV. So 
If I could stick to that, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be straight. You're responsible for this. All right. Okay. You are now proud owner of a TV. Take it back to yourself. Dealing with children here is different from the adults because you do tend to adopt a parental role. I don't know all their stories. I don't know all their home lives. I don't know if they think of me as a father. I think some of them do. And I have to fulfill that obligation to them as well as do my custody position. Be what they need to grow. You have cable. I don't want to see any of them come back if they go out on, onto the civilian population and I take that responsibility very seriously. From reward programs through to mandatory schooling, the staff inside the juvenile unit of Warbash attempt to provide as stable a life as possible for the boys in their care. Four multiplied by a number plus six equals 46. But some of these are teenagers trying to cope emotionally with long sentences. Indiana law states that with good behavior, an inmate has to serve a minimum of half their sentence leaving Jesus Macedo Perez still facing being in prison until he's at least 49 years old. Nah, I'm not calm about it, but I'm, I'm as calm as they'll get. People just try to kill themselves or, or go crazy like they, you feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, motherfuckers don't ain't the same. I ain't the same no more. But I'm not trying to deal with it like that. I'm not trying to go nuts. I'm not trying to kill myself. I still got... Even though I'm here, I still got something to live for. Jesus is looking for any way to shorten his sentence. Hey, Hello. how you doing? For advice, he's come to casework manager, Alita Burnett. Everything goes into play, as I told you from the very beginning. <clears throat> conduct, so you keep your conduct, you keep going to school, get everything you can so they see you're trying to improve your life, then you can try to get some of these things. It's tough, I know. I can see it in your eyes that you're upset. Whatever I can do, if it's just like one thing I can do, I'm gonna try to do that one thing. But don't get all down in the dumps yet. You're gonna make the best you can of everything, you know? Yeah. So, you know, um, just because I can't run out here and save you for this, that doesn't mean that I don't, I'm not interested in which way you're going. Okay, that'll work? Yeah. Okay, All right, we're good. You. All right. I just can't even imagine being that young and being in that situation. It just doesn't even compute with my mind. I just see it, but it still doesn't compute. I think he'll be okay, but I mean, I would be devastated, but of course I've never put myself in that position. Having worked in the unit for seven years, Alita sees how a child's upbringing can ultimately lead to a crime that puts them behind bars. Uh, they come from families that, you know, we have generations of this stuff going on, generations of the drugs, generations of, of uh, prison, and, you know, it's, it's, it's sad, you know. We have several in there right now that has seen a parent kill the other parent. And then we wonder, you know, um, it's uh, almost heartbreaking in some ways, you know, some of the things these young little kids have gone through. Jesus is from Elkhart in northern Indiana. His father left home when he was a toddler. The things I remember about my dad, they were not good memories. I remember him on top of my mom. He was hitting her. And I, I, I couldn't take it no more. I just, I grabbed something, and I hit him in the head with it. And I was young, and then, like, he hit me, and I flew, I flew across the room. And I just, I just remember that part. His mother, Irene, is unemployed and is bringing up her five remaining children in their two-bedroom apartment, a five-hour drive from the prison. They haven't seen Jesus since he was taken to Warbash. He's my blood-to-blood -blood brother. Like, he's my real brother. And it hurts me a lot because... We were like, um, me and him have been through a lot together and stuff. 
and like, but we still like play. I don't know. It's just hard, and I don't want him, nothing to happen to him. With his family living just yards from where Jesus's gangland shooting took place, his fear is that a rival gang will seek revenge on his family. That just stirs me out too, like thinking about like I can't be there for my family. Like, and all the enemies I had, like, I hope they don't try to hurt my family. Like, I just think about that. But it's not just on the outside where his gang life can catch up with him. Officers have caught Jesus carrying a letter containing gang-related material. It never surprises me what these guys try to get it, get away with. It's uh, some of them who are, who are facing life sentences, you know, really what do they have to lose? I mean, they've already lost their life or possibility of life out on the streets, so now it's just up to them as to um, the type of quality of life that they want to have. And a lot of them get persuaded with the gang activities, thinking that that's going to give them uh, more creature comforts here inside. Um, but eventually it catches up to them. Do you want me to read all this to you? No, I don't even care for it. Do you understand what it is? Yeah, it's too deep. Many of the teenagers at Warbash join gangs at a young age. Some of them are not getting um, nurturing the way that they need to have it. And so they get into a gang. Everybody wants to belong. And then they'll get them when they're very, very young. You know, they just want to belong to something. And a lot of them get pulled in. How do you play? Guilty. Guilty? For Jesus, this is his first write-up. In prison more than ever, gang membership is hard to escape. Probably one of the hardest things you can do is get out of a gang. Because the only way you really do get out of a gang is, feel me, you know, death. Shit. Cut. I don't know. I don't even care. I don't care about shit. Fuck that, man. I'm tired of this shit. Many of the teenagers at Warbash have absent fathers. Many of them are fathers themselves. Today is visiting day, and it's particularly special for one prisoner. My name is Anthony Sanders. I'm 17. I was sentenced to eight years for two counts of robbery. Anthony has a son, and today will be the first time he's seen him since he arrived at Warbash over a year ago. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it because I ain't seen my son in a long time and I just wanted him to feel my presence, you know, feel, get the feeling of his dad being around again, talk to him. His girlfriend, Nini, and his two-year-old son, Anthony Jr., have made the two-hour drive from Indianapolis to visit. It's hard to explain, but we're excited. We ain't seen him in over a year. So, yeah, we're happy. I'm going to tell him I love him, see if he's telling me he loves me back and stuff like that. That's really it, man. There you go. Junior, who that? What's up? What's up? You did. Come here. Act like you don't even know. What's up? I'm your daddy. Say, daddy. You want your mommy? You gonna leave me? What's up? Say, daddy, what's up? You don't even remember me, huh? What's your mama? I'm I want the kids, I want you. Say what's up, say daddy. What's up for crying? What's up? It's crazy. It's cool, say what's up. 
Mama, Daddy, Mama, Daddy, Mama, Daddy. And this who you always talking about? Say Daddy. He wants to have a family. He wants that so badly. They're children themselves, so, you know, that's quite a responsibility, even for somebody who hasn't gone through some of the things they've gone through already. Oh, you made me mad. You look the same. I didn't see how it did. No, you don't. <laughs> a lot of the kids are in relationships, and of course, you know, they're wanting them to, their girlfriends to marry them and all of this. I mean, it is crushing for them when they move on. And it's crushing for them, especially if they have a child with that person, because that happens quite a bit. I'm not going to let you go until you say dada. 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 Yeah, big boy. Oh. Huh? It was wonderful. At first, I was kind of mad. He, he didn't act like he didn't know who I was. He was a little shy, but I figured it out. But all overall, he started calling me daddy. He came through. He made my day. It was fun. Made me feel real good. Made me feel like a father. What does that feel like? Make you feel like you're important. You know what I mean? Let me let me know I really do got some people that love me. Cause when you ain't got too many people out there at home, you know, when somebody looking up to you, it make you feel important in some type of way. Make me feel good, man. Bye, daddy. Say love you. Bye, I love you too. Like, if he made my day, I'm ready to go back to my room and just chill. Yeah. Memorial Day, a public holiday in America, and the prison put on a special meal for the boys in Block D. They are getting extra food, extra calories, uh, special treats that they don't normally get throughout the week. What, what is on the menu today? Uh, we have barbecue chicken, seasoned corn, uh, tossed salad dressing, and fruit cake. They look, chicken look burnt. Salad always look good. What's Corn cool. cool. You know what it's supposed to be? What is it supposed to be, Kim? Yeah. Strawberry shortcake. <laughs> strawberry shortcake. Ah, oh, man. It's supposed to be. <laughs> what you think about your tray, bro? <laughs> if they don't like the prison food, inmates can also buy treats with their own money. Blake Lehman has been at Warbash for over a year and has saved up for some ingredients to make a cake. The bottom, I got like honey buns, like crushed up to make like a dough. And I put some cookies on top of that, some peanut butter, and then more cookies, and then some honey buns. And then this is some icing that I made, because it's the closest thing to icing we can get. Some chocolate and some peanut butter. A little bit of milk, mixed it up. He's celebrating a big moment in every child's life, his 18th birthday. This is the second birthday I spent in jail. So, you know, it's really just another day. So I, this is why I made a cake, so I try to make it special. You know, it's my 18th birthday. A little bit more chocolate, you know. Yeah, I think it looks good. That's my nice birthday. You know, the best, best you can do, really. Don't get any better than that. My name is Blake Lemon. I'm 18 years old. I was sentenced to 55 years for murder. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. As a teenager, Blake was involved in petty crime and had been expelled from his high school. I hung out with my girlfriend a lot. You know, we were close. I was getting high every day, you know, smoking. I was. I wasn't really worried about a lot of stuff, you know. And wasn't thinking too much about nothing. Blake and four friends decided to break into a house in search of some quick money. Once kicked the door to the back and uh, got inside. And there was another door to the kitchen that was locked too. I think someone kicked that too. I didn't know anyone was there until there was actually gunshots. You know, that's when I kind of figured out, you know, somebody's home. I didn't know. You know I didn't hear anything. I just 
heard the gunshots, and turned around, and ran the other way. You know, and that's what all of us did. We all ended up running, running away. You know, so three, all three of us, me, Denzel, and Jose, ended up in the closet. But as Denzel was running towards the closet, he had got shot in the chest. And you know, so he's climbing in the closet and he's bleeding. You know, and then as I'm climbing in the closet, I got shot in the leg. So we're all three in the closet, and you know, I'm bleeding. Denzel's actually dying. You could almost see like his, you know, his spirit leave his body. You know, like you could just tell it was, it was over. You know, and it's, it was bad. It was real bad. With their friend Denzel dead in the house, the homeowner called the police. The remaining four were arrested and taken to the local jail. I would found out while I was sitting there that they were charging us with murder. You know, and at the time, I kind of thought, okay, you know, they don't know what happened. I'm like, you know, they haven't talked to anybody, you know. They must think, you know, we killed Denzel. They, they must think, you know, something, they must have this, something switched around, something mixed up or something. But there was no mix-up. Under Indiana law, if someone dies during a burglary, all those breaking in can be held accountable. The prosecutor said if there was a murder committed, you know, the homeowner was just in what he did, which, you know, it is what it is, you know, it was his home, that's right. But, and he said someone has to be held responsible, so he felt we were going to be held responsible because our actions resulted in what happened. The jury found the four guilty of murder. Blake was given 55 years behind bars. Time to reflect on how it had gone so badly wrong. My biggest regret about that day is the whole day. I mean, hell, I should have just went home. Why was I following when I should have been leading? You know, why was I, you know, not thinking for myself, you know, not thinking farther ahead, not thinking about what could have happened, what could go wrong, you know? So, yeah, I definitely regret that day. I regret a lot of everything about it. There's been an incident in the youth block. Marquise Lee is charged with assaulting a custody officer and is about to go through the disciplinary process. The previous evening, Lee threw liquid at another offender, which also hit the night shift custody officer. I know it may not sound serious, but it's, it is very serious. If they throw liquid or anything else or any assault to staff, if we would not take that seriously, we would be assaulted all the time. Can you tell me what happened? He, he, he told it the best. I mean, you feel me? I was... So you threw it on a Fender Buchanan and it hit, it hit the officer? Yeah. If it's urine and all of this, and you throw it at somebody, it could contain viruses. So it's very serious. Tell me how you're going to plead. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, you're probably not going to stay in here. What? You're 18 years of age, and you're, I, I can't have you, even whether you meant to do it or you were playing around, I can't have you doing that on a youth unit. You're 18, right? Yeah. So how are you going to plead? I don't get how I'm supposed to plead. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty or not guilty? Oh, uh, yeah, I plead, I plead guilty. I, I did it. Okay. If he's moved out of the juvenile block, Marquise will miss the chance to complete his education in there. I, I'll get it if I intentionally meant to do it, you feel me? Meant to get it on the CL, but I didn't, you feel me? And that's, that's, you feel me? I don't know, man. It really is. Hearing officer Sarah Chapman is responsible for deciding the sentence. I found you guilty. Don't throw a liquid substance on staff or and or offenders. One month phone, three months seg, 45 good days. I don't play when it comes to throwing stuff. You're going to have to go sit in seg and think about what you did. The seg, or segregation unit, is the solitary confinement wing for adult prisoners. How many days in seg? 90 days. 90. Three months. It's a sad day, but if anybody's heard me talk in orientation or talk to them, I tell them how important those conducts are. 
and you know if you want to take a risk then you know that's on you he was on this unit even though he was 18 years old he has been moved to an adult unit where he will be treated as an adult uh, he is not being segregated from the other influences like he would be over here. Therefore, even though he is in a cell by himself, he will still be influenced by the, the voices and the comments of those around him. Over here, we tend to try and shield them from that as much as humanly possible. Over there, if the shield's gone. They make a mistake, it doesn't surprise me. After all, they're here for mistakes they've made. It's, it's just a repetition of behavior. Our job here is to try to correct and change that behavior. Are we successful? Not always, no. Are we successful some of the times? Yes. We just be happy for our successes and go on our business because we can't dwell on the failures. for the boys at Warbash Valley Prison is to complete their high school education. 18-year-old Blake Lehman recently took his final exams. I have some good news for you. Yes, I you passed. passed your high school equivalency. Congratulations. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Good work. All right? Thanks, man. So, maybe you can move forward from here, right? Yep. That's, that's fine. Okay. Good work. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming down. Thanks, man. What does that mean to you, like? I don't know, it means I got an education now, I don't know. I don't know, I'm happy though. I failed the first time, so you know, I'm just glad I got it done. With his schooling complete and having turned 18, Blake is now eligible for the next stage of prison life, the adult wing, where he could spend the next 53 years. You hear all these stories and stuff like that, I just, you know, I see it for myself. And I guess I got a lot of time to do it, I'm not, I could sit over here for until I'm like 21 or something like that. I don't want to do that. You know? I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to go to the general population eventually. I'm gonna have to go to the adult block eventually. So you know, get it out the way. Let's go. Blake's mother Angie visits every two weeks. She is in less of a hurry for Blake's move. I'm nervous about him going to the adult side. I know he's got a couple buddies over there that are waiting, but. Um, I just know that there's a lot of grown men over there that have actually committed murder and horrifying crimes. Hi, honey. I miss you a lot. She's come with Blake's brother, sister, and girlfriend to see him for the first time since his 18th birthday. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> as well as bringing up her other two children and holding down a job working with people with disabilities, Angie's had to deal with the stigma attached to being the mother of a convicted murderer. <laughs> I've heard things, such negative things through the last year. Even us parents should have been convicted or we should have been charged, things like that. Um, but as a parent, we can only do so much. I mean, we can only lead them so far. We can only give them so much advice. As teenagers, we all know we all make dumb choices and do things that you wish you wouldn't have done. <laughs> From her perspective, the mistakes juveniles make is not taken into account in the U.S. system of trying children as adults. I think we have a juvenile justice system for a reason. I think all juveniles should be charged as juveniles. <laughs> They're not adults. They don't think like adults. They don't. They haven't learned like we have. These kids should have a chance to learn from their mistake, and they didn't get that opportunity. For Blake and other teenagers at Warbash, such as Hayseed, at the beginning of sentences longer than their life so far, hope of release is something to cling on to. Being locked up for this much time, I want to find out things I can do. I know there's something out there, at least give me some time cuts or something like. The prison library could help Jesus find an answer. Adult prisoners work as clerks to help guide fellow inmates through the complex US legal system. How, well, how can I learn about the, this, like that, and, and this? His um, murder charge, combined with his gang activity, meant he was looking at a sentence of 130 years. So he took a guilty plea in court, in return for a reduced sentence of 65 years. 
So basically, this is your first step trying to do anything about a PCR. You know what a PCR is for, though, right? I know it stands for post conviction relief for stuff. Reduce your sentence, so? And it can reduce your sentence and get your sentence overturned. It can, it can be a, anything, go back and get you retried, you know what I mean? It, like, but I took a plea, so it doesn't matter, though. Oh, yeah. a plea? Yeah. Uh, um, well. I don't hold a lot of hope that he's going to get a shorter sentence out of this. Nobody's going to get him out of here in a year. Nobody's going to get him out of here in two. Unless they overturn his whole case, it's just not going to happen. Every prisoner, whatever age, whatever crime, has to come to terms with the consequences of their actions. I regret everything I did. I regret making money, even though it was it was, it was good. I regret making money the bad way. I didn't realize it was affecting people. It was affecting people that were addicted to drugs. Like, I don't know, like, stuff like that. I just, I guess I was too young to realize I was, I mean, I'm, I'm 17. I was 12, 13, 14, 15. I hate myself for what I did. And I understand why people hate me. I get it. I know why it's, I feel them. Like, I hate myself too. Whatever a child's future holds, it falls to the staff to guide the inmates through their time as best they can. If one of the young men have years and years and years, the only thing I can do is help them endure it, I guess. Giving them hope is not, I, I can't do it. I would like to see them have a better life. And I think that takes a lot out on you when you know you can't really provide that. I'm always trying to bow out <laughs> of there. It's hard on me, so I'm ready to pass that crown over to somebody else. I'm tired of being locked up. I'm in a penitentiary. Ain't got no money on my books, and I'm so hungry, and I'm locked up. Ain't got no money on the phone. My back against the wall, and I'm all alone. Man, I'm locked up. See, this right here gonna change me for the better. Cause I'm tired of talking to my people through these letters. Man, I'm locked up. Being locked up in this room driving me crazy. And my brain is getting lazy, man, I'm locked up, I'm in a penitentiary, I ain't got no money on my books and I'm so hungry, and I'm locked up, see this right here gonna change me for the better, cause I'm tired of talking to my people through these letters, man, I'm locked up, been locked up in this room driving me crazy, and my brain is getting lazy, man, I'm locked up.